Thank you, Mr. President. Madam President, uh, the, uh, the last decade has been rather turbulent uh, for the European Union, and uh, the problems will, of course, uh, uh, continue. The EU today is, a worse, is in a worse shape than it was 10 years ago. I therefore find it rather puzzling that uh, every year over the last decade we have heard from every Commission uh, President that the radiant future is awaiting us and that the days of the EU glory are just round the corner, provided of course, that uh, uh, European Commission, European institutions receive, uh, get more competences. You must be uh, aware, Madam President, that uh, fewer and fewer people across Europe take this message uh, uh, seriously. Uh, European Health Agency, European Cloud, European Bauhaus, I wonder if the new European architecture will resemble this uh, building. What a frightening perspective. Uh, uh, Madam President, the, the gist of your argument today was that the pandemic crisis is a good opportunity to launch uh, ambitious radical uh, programs, including the, the, the Green Deal. I'm sorry to say, but this is bad argument, this is bad logic, and the bad logic generates bad, bad policy. What you are proposing is a great leap forward in a situation in which the, the future is more precarious than ever. The Green Deal with 55%, why not 60, uh, is a costly extravaganza animate, animated solely by a spirit of environmentalist crusade, not by a sober, sober social and economic uh, calculation. Now, a few words about so-called rule of law prov provisions. I said so-called because it has nothing to do with rule or with law. Uh, the whole idea, as you remember, was an iniquitous trick of the previous Commission in complete disregard to the treaties uh, in the intention to bully the governments that dissented from, dissented from the mainstream. It is not what they do, those governments do, because they don't do anything objectionable, but what they are. And the previous commission let a malignant genie uh, out of the bottle, a genie of political foul play, and uh, they are not interested in putting it back. This uh, so-called conditionality is another step towards complete lawlessness the prospect which uh, makes the majority of my colleagues almost ecstatic. Uh, and, uh, 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 Madam President, do not be deluded by this sanctimonious uh, rhetoric you hear in this chamber. As usual, uh, behind sanctimoniousness, uh, there is ugly politics and there is hypocrisy. What this rule of law uh, politics amounts to is brutal majoritarianism, the mainstream majority wants to crush every form of dissent and do not open the door for more instruments of the tyranny of the, of the majority. As you promised, you would do it. That was the scariest part of your uh, uh, speech. This is already getting uglier and uglier, wider and more mendacious. Uh, the European institutions want to switch off uh, uh, democratically constituted institutions of the nation uh, uh, states. They instigate internal con conflicts by uh, endorsing some parties against, against other parties. This is not your business. You shouldn't do it. Uh, 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 so this is political arrogance at its, wor at its worst. Let me uh, conclude. If, uh, if we continue if you and your commission will continue on the current course, the course espoused by many of my fellow group leaders here uh, this morning, Europe will be wrecked. I repeat, Europe will be wrecked, caught in an ideological pincer movement orchestrated by green and federalist extremists. Mr. Juncker will forever be remembered as the commission president who lost Britain. Uh, you, Mrs. von der Leyen, must make sure that you are not the president who lost the peoples of Europe. I urge you, work with member states, not with the ideologically driven campaigns masquerading as political groups in this House. Save the European Union from ideology 
and return it to reality.